So, we have two files, like two doors over here. One of them is the door of doom that is going to lead to this computer being completely destroyed, all of our data erased, and the other one is just an innocent normal PDF that we need to open. They both say they're totally legit, and as a cybersecurity analyst myself, I couldn't tell you which one was innocent. So if you've set yourself up like this, and you're having to make this decision, you have set yourself up for failure. But let's give it a try anyway. So which one do you think we should open? Well, this one has a smiley face, so maybe this is the innocent one. Surely something that's smiling at me isn't going to hurt me, right? 50-50 and we chose wrong. Well, it's too late now. And all of our data is encrypted by the infamous Black Matter ransomware. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can prevent a situation like this simply by configuring your system correctly. And this is gonna apply if you're just a home user, if you're trying to configure your systems for business to make them idiot proof so that this cannot happen. So let's go back and start again, shall we? Unfortunately, this is how most people use their computers, and it's not optimal from a security standpoint. Well, first of all, you want to be able to see what the file type is instead of relying on the icon as an indicator because icons can be changed. So even though this has the icon of a PDF and looks exactly the same as a legitimate PDF, and I'll open it just to prove the point since we didn't get to after executing the ransomware, but the point is they both look identical. And no matter how smart you are as a user, when you're using your computer, you're not going to inspect the code of everything that you click on. That's just not how we function. So what you want to do is go into view and make sure that you have details selected. And now all of a sudden, things look a little bit different. If we look at the type, now we can see that one is a Microsoft Edge PDF document and the other is an application. If you want to make this point more pronounced, you can also move the type to be the first thing on the description. So you instinctively look at the type before you read the name. Another small modification you can do to your Explorer window is to enable the preview window. So if it says no preview available, it usually means it's an application. Now, another thing you can do is set it to show details here as well, in which case you're going to see the size, the application, and it's gonna give you an easier link to properties. But even if you don't use either of these, you're much better off with this setup where you've got the type and you also want to click on it so applications are ordered by type. So if you have, let's say, five PDFs, all of them are going to be grouped together and the application is going to be grouped separately. And this can be a problem. So for example, if we grab a few PDFs from here, copy them over to our documents folder, now all of a sudden, if the application has a similar name and it's in the midst of these PDFs, it's gonna be very easy for you to open it and run the malware. Whereas if we click on the type and sort everything by type now, you know that this is an application. So it's gonna be at the top or the bottom and all the other PDFs are gonna be segregated. But most people have already lost by this point. They never get to see the thing they're executing in the Explorer window they execute it directly off the browser. So maybe they download something that they think is a PDF and then they click on the open button in the browser itself. Now, in order to avoid that, you wanna change some settings in the browser. Going into downloads, you wanna set up a download location and you don't want to ask the user for each download. You wanna have this turned off. And you also wanna make sure that you do not show downloads menu when a download starts. So this is gonna disable that little prompt here that tells you that a file is downloading and it's just going to download to your location. So instead of clicking the open button instinctively and running something that may be something you don't wanna run, you're going to finish your download and then you're going to go into the downloads folder and then you're going to see ah this is an application but what i wanted to open was a pdf and by then your brain can catch up these tips may seem very basic but trust me if i put myself in a situation where i'm looking at a window like this i'm not going to have the ability anymore to distinguish between what i'm running and what i should not be running Another thing that you should absolutely change is view file extensions. So you wanna make sure that you go into the view section again 
and click on show and file name extensions. This is something that I believe Windows should do by default, but it doesn't, so now you do. And with this view, you are very unlikely to accidentally open an application thinking it's a PDF. And believe it or not, even today with all the InfoStealer malware, this is how most people get infected. They accidentally run an InfoStealer thinking it's a PDF or a contract or something. Sometimes simple tweaks like this can be the difference between a large organization getting infected and paying millions of dollars to a cyber criminal and nothing happening. People going about their day. The thing is, when it works, you don't hear about it. So let me know in the comments below if you think these kinds of tweaks make a difference in your personal experience with them? Have you accidentally executed malware? Because I know I have, and I made a video talking about it as well. But remember to like and share if you found it helpful. Post on LinkedIn as well, because you don't want your coworker to run that ransomware and infect your company either. Also, this video is sponsored by Malwarebytes. Many of you may know this as the legendary second opinion scanner, but now it comes with full real-time protection. So if we try to re-execute our malware, even if we have it set up this way, it is going to be blocked. One of the things worth highlighting here is that Malwarebytes is definitely very different to what it was a few years ago. So for example, now, we don't just have simple detection capabilities. If we go into settings, you will see that under security, we have things like exploit protection, brute force protection. And if we go into advanced settings, we have application hardening capabilities similar to what you would expect for an enterprise grade product. We also have an option to block penetration testing attacks, which can protect you from techniques that hackers would use to infiltrate your system. So if you haven't checked it out in a long time, you can click on link in description, try them out, show them some love for sponsoring this video. Personally, one of the things I really like about Malwarebytes is that it works on execution. So it's not going to annoy you with a ton of alerts. Even if you have a malware file on your system, it's only going to block it when it's executed, which is perfect for somebody like me who likes to play around with this stuff. You can check out all of the new features for free using the link in description. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.